Yeah, great to have you with us here on DXB today as we continue our deep dive into urbanisation. We've been prompted by the conversations that are taking place down the World Government Summit. That might have wrapped for the day, but not here. And we continue the conversation with our next guest. Let's talk sustainable urbanisation. How do you build or how do you fast track sustainable development, especially when it comes to urbanisation, especially in a city and a region like this? Well, let's ask the man that knows, the CEO of URB is Baharash Bagarian, who's alongside us as well. Good to see you as always. Pleasure to be back. Great Thank you to so have much. you on board. I know it's a busy time of year, what with WGS ongoing and this, that and everything. But um, again, I think I go back to that point of a lot of people will look at this part of the world and they'll look at the rapid development. They'll look at the the, the, the developers out there who uh, the, the real estate and property and market is booming at present, etc. How do you balance the need for sustainability and sustainable development with that demand mm. for development at the same time? Is it a fine balance? I think that's always going to be a challenge, not just for the region. I think that's the challenge globally. And I think uh, the, the trick here is to almost take a step back and think actually, what is it that we are building? in the first place and more importantly how can we build them more sustainably without affecting the cost because yeah. it does cost extra in order to be self-sufficient yeah. right so, so so but the paybacks that you have today compared to what they were you know 20 years back is far far uh, quicker to actually get those paybacks so when we talk about energy you can get those paybacks within four years mm -hmm. right so you can actually go fully off-grid and get all your energy from uh, renewable energy. But at the same time, even when we talk about waste recycling, now we have systems that we can implement into, de into developments that are far more affordable. Mm -hmm. If you ask me a few years back, what about water? Because a lot of the drinking water here in this region is from uh, des desalination, which yeah. requires a lot of energy. And also the, the byproduct of that is brine, which is really harmful. But today we are seeing new innovations um, that are coming into the market where you can actually extract water from the air. So, when it, when it comes to going fully off-grid, we are almost there. But sustainability isn't just about technology mm. and being entirely self-sufficient. Sustainability is about the basic principles. Mm -hmm. So when you're planning a development, basic techniques, orientation, form, density, reducing the amount of solar gain that goes into the house, this is free. This is up to the urban planner, right? These principles has been used for thousands of years. How people get around this, the city, right? Um, how you distribute those functions to make it so that actually I can walk somewhere rather than taking my car to get there. Now, Dubai has made quite a lot of, uh, let's say, steps in order to achieve a 20-minute city. It has already launched its 20-minute city initiative mm -hmm. in order to make sure that all residents are able to get to those, you know, the amenities and the necessities that they actually need within 20 minutes, you know, whether it's drive or whether it's walking. But the trick now is to get rid of the car, right? This is the challenge that I think most cities will have and I think that is really requires a holistic approach to, to, to do so. And I think that's one of the problems that we have that we Good always try to do that in Dubai as well. <laughs> well yeah. it is doable. And this is a, a lot of people think it's a crazy idea yeah. to actually um, get people and to really shift the balance yeah. away from uh, car travel because actually it's so convenient. Dubai is the most convenient city in the world to actually drive a car. And the challenge is to make it more convenient for people to cycle or for people to walk. And, and that's how places like Amsterdam and Copenhagen are the best cities for cycling because it's more inconvenient for to people drive, actually, to yeah, actually yeah. drive. Come on, if I wasn't worried about being run over, I would 100% bike everywhere. Yeah. I know you can't see, we can't imagine it, Tom. You're looking at me Did with that lie? same look. I love biking. I'm just always worried I'm going to get run over because there's no space for me. I'm like, oh. There's that level of resistance. I'm from Paris, and so Hidalgo, who's our mayor, is actually going through, we're going through these growing pains, especially ahead of the Olympics coming up, of this 15-minute city kind of strategy, right? But I guess the question I had for you is kind of that, back to the technology, but like, what are some of the technologies that you're seeing that are exciting you the most, uh, insofar as they have applications to Dubai specifically? I think um, when it comes to mobility especially, we're, we're seeing a lot of new technology. Actually, um, our, our last year's winner, of the incubator, the URB yeah, yeah. incubator was the world's smartest e-scooter, mm. which can actually communicate with the rider. So the helmet, as well as the bike itself, is able to send either vi vibrations or either through uh, new illumination to warn other drivers, you know, once they get close. But I think um, the kind of technology that we're interested in are the technology that can bridge the gap that we are seeing when it comes to going fully off-grid. Off so, this is what I think um, would make the cities of, of the future, cities that can address food, energy, and water. These are the three securities that every citizen 
needs to have for a city to be truly su 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 sustainable, but how to do it in an equitable way, mm -hmm. how to do it at a neighborhood level, not things that happen elsewhere and you have to bring them into the city. A city isn't just one big neighborhood. A city is a series of neighborhoods, yeah. right? So you might have, you know, 50 neighborhoods of, you know, 1,000 or 10,000 people living in those neighborhoods. And the challenge is how can we make sure that each of these neighborhoods is able to accommodate the people who are living there? So they have the schools, they have the shoppings, they have all their healthcare all happening there. So localized economies is what we are interested in. Mm -hmm. So technologies that can help us achieve that. We saw some very interesting things come in last year. Um, and it's not always, you know, you, you can invest in everyone. It's what's more applicable yeah. to Dubai. Localized. Mm -hmm. um, so, so things like, you know, imagine if you could get the choice of where your energy comes from. So you could pay extra a premium to actually get all your energy from uh, re re renewable energy, to actually give that power mm. to, the con to the consumer. And I think this kind of te technology will actually help us to give the choices back Absolutely. to the people. And I think the future for me is very exciting, especially, especially now for, for, for urbanists, because we have so many challenges. And the challenge is not to see them as singular problems, but actually how can we now manage to do multifunctional solutions to many problems in one go. Right. Now, Baharash, just touching on your, your initial answer, you're talking about all the massive transitions we've made away from desalination plants, etc. If it was up to you to roll out some policies that everyone would have to adhere to here, to make even greater, more drastic changes in Dubai, in the city, in the Emirates, what would they be? Um, I think policy is definitely something that w we need when it comes to urban development. And one of them would be to, um, I think, I need to be balanced too, right? Be because you, you, you can't impose too much regulations on all the developments. Otherwise, people will not develop, Adhere right? Things will, will not be, be, be built. But I think um, definitely we, we need to think about what are those assets that we need, right? So I think just building more housing for investors is not this, the, the solution. This is one of the problems that we have mm -hmm. in Dubai. Yeah. A lot of these properties that, you know, you, you hear now within 24 hours, they've sold out yes. all properties. But who's buying them? <laughs> it's investors, right? It's yeah. not really the people who need to actually have a sense of belonging in the city. Mm -hmm. So affordability is a big, big problem here in the region. You still see it, don't you, to this day? I was only thinking that the other night, driving at, uh, after dark, and the, the number of lights you see off in apartment blocks and things like that. Mm. And that, ca that can't be everyone out yes. for dinner, yeah. uh, that's <laughs> yeah. for sure. So, so I think this would be a big thing that I, that I would change because it will give people a sense of belonging, right? But it will also make it more equitable. So even the people who are on the low income bracket can have access to finance and to be able to actually afford some of these properties. But again, it takes a holistic ap approach. It's not just down to the government and the developer. You also need the finance pe pe people and, and, and lenders to allow that option. But I think it's, it's an ex exciting period because you have so many challenges and the kind of projects that we are seeing is very, very, very unique because the city isn't just bound by a boundary and here's all the kind of buildings and roads. A city of the future is edgeless, right? It's things that can happen in the ocean, things that can happen even in the rural communities and what kind of opportunities we could use to make them more, more, more sustainable, whether it's through ecotourism or through some uh, let's say, um, regeneration projects so we can yeah. actually look after the, the marine e ecosystem at, at, the same, at, the, at the same time, mm -hmm. but make it more of a green e economy so even developers can invest in those projects. Thank you, Baharaj, for your insight. It's been, you know, incredible to have you and also, yes, an exciting time, very busy time and very busy at the World Government Summit. And in fact, we managed to grab some incredible guests down at the summit from earlier today. Let's take a look. Mr. Ferguson, thank you very much for joining us on DXB today. Um, now, you're the global head for new globalization at The Economist. Being your position, can you give us a little bit of your insights on the outlook for the global economy? Um, I, I focus a lot on trade in my work, and Dubai is just very much at the center of global trade. And that's a really, really important part. But also, what we're talking about here at, at the World Government Summit is AI. And Dubai can continue to play that role to bring people together because I'm from the West, if it wasn't obvious, 
But Dubai is able to bring people from various parts of the world together, whether that's trade or conversations around AI. And I think that's a really positive thing for where Dubai sits in the world. Incredible. And how do you believe, what's the outcomes of this World Government Summit? What do you believe are the key takeaways? Um, what are the insights that have happened over the course of these last three days? Well, it's probably not a surprise, but AI is everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. And for, and for good reason. But that actually makes me maybe optimistic or cautiously optimistic again. We need to collaborate. AI is a huge new technology, I mean, particularly Gen AI. But what makes me feel good about this conference is private sector is here, obviously the public sector is here, many, many countries are here talking together about how to make the best of AI. Now with any technology, there's going to be good and bad or pros and cons, and that's absolutely true of AI. But what makes me feel a little bit better about the outlook is everyone's trying to work together on how to make the most of the good bits and minimize the bad bits. But there's one extra insight I would add here to, to everyone's conversations uh, here in Dubai. We need public engagement. So it's great to have governments working with the private sector and working with other countries, but we also need to engage the general population. And I genuinely believe that those countries that engage the general population the best, I think they will win the AI race over the next 10 to 20 years. And how do you believe that engagement can happen? Like the UAE is a great example of kind of bringing people together, but how can we engage the, the family sitting at home watching us on, on TV? Bring them into the conversation. And that might be having certain um, stakeholder meetings, stakeholder groups in, in Dubai, but different parts of the UAE, and making sure the, the everyday person watching your great show can come and engage with business leaders and government leaders to understand what's going on. The more that people can do that, I think the better outcomes we'll all see. And the theme of this year's World Government Summit is shaping future governments. Um, what are the key takeaways that you would like to see that the governments that have participated here, I think there's over 85 governments, 140 representations from over 140 countries at this World Government Summit. What do you believe that you would like to see them take away back to their own countries, to their own governments? So the takeaway that I'd love everyone to take away is a renewed effort to not destroy the sort of global economy as we see it. We often talk about fragmentation, and that's basically the world breaking up into small fragments, basically based on geopolitical sort of groupings. That's not a good outcome. No one wins. No one wins if we fragment the global economy. So I know that's challenging. It's very easy for me to say, let's not fragment. And the world is extremely complicated, and we all know that. But if there's one thing I'd say to every government leader here going back to, to their country, we need a renewed effort to restore the faith in global trade to restore the faith in the global economy because if we all break it up there's no winners there's only losers so we just need a renewed effort to restore globalization but to restore the global economy and people's faith and trust in that global economy very insightful advice indeed thank you very much for joining us on the show mr ferguson thank you very much thank you that's amazing insight from the World Government Summit, but after this, we're gonna delve deeper into urban planning with the founder and chief architect of Arc Identity. Stay here.